We don't even need these anymore. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're gonna talk about making mugs, just like this. But before we get started with this video, there's a couple of things we need to go over first. Number one, if you do not know how to pull a cylinder because a mug is basically just a cylinder with a handle on it, then you need to go over that step before you get to this step right here. I've already made a video for you guys on that, I will link it down below for you. Number two, if you already know how to make your cylinder or your cup, I'm guessing that you're pretty much just here to learn how to make the handles or learn to attach said handles. And if you are that person, you can go ahead and click this timestamp right here. You can go ahead and skip half the video because you already know how to make this part right here because the concentration in this video is primarily going to be on handles because as I said before a mug is pretty much just a cylinder with a handle on it you like that it's kind of like playing peekaboo with a four-year-old if I cover it up oh, it's gone you don't know where it is where'd it go this timestamp right here will fast forward you to the handle section because to be honest with you that's what most people have problems with I even have a little potter's cheat code for you so that you can have your handle without even pulling an actual handle now that we've gotten those two things out of the way, it's time to make our cups that we're going to be attaching our handles to. Okay, wonderful. Now that we've actually made our cups, all we have to do is wrap these up, wait a couple of days for them to dry, and then we can safely attach our psych. I stayed up all night last night making these just for you. Haven't you ever seen a cooking show before? I clearly made these yesterday. After you've made your mugs, you can start crafting your handles or trimming the bottoms of your mugs. This part's a little bit interchangeable, and let me explain for any true beginners out there. You see this cup? I threw this, trimmed it, and dried it last night. This took maybe a day to a half a day to dry out and trim, but this is a fairly normal sized product. It's about as large as my hand, and because of that, this takes a fairly normal amount of time to dry, versus something like this. This is very large, and this takes much more time to dry than something of that little medium cup would. That mug might have taken maybe a day to a half a day to dry and trim, but this probably takes about a week, and I'm usually wrapping it up in some sort of plastic so it slow dries and prevents cracking. If things dry too quickly, they end up cracking, and in the case of making our mugs today, we kind of need them to stay below the leather hard phase, because if they go anywhere above leather hard, it's gonna be really difficult to attach our handles. If it is a nice sunny day outside, your handles will usually dry in about five to 10 minutes, and they won't become super squishy, and they'll stop being tacky. You can very easily handle them. The reason I'm putting so much stress on this part is because you can very easily make your handles, let them sit out into the air to air dry, trim all of your mugs, and within the time that you've probably trimmed about five or six mugs, your handles will be ready to attach to your clay body. Although, there's nothing wrong with trimming all of your mugs and then pulling your handles to let them dry. Either process takes about five to 15 minutes. So this part's really up to you. You can either pull your handles and trim these as they dry, or you can trim these, pull your handles, and just wait the five to 15 minutes that it would take for those handles to dry anyway. I know that was a lot of words, but to simply put it, big things take big time dry, little things take little time dry, you're about to pull little thing, little time dry. If you've already trimmed your cups and you're letting them sit out in the air as you pull your handles, please understand that these are going to air dry over time because the longer you leave your clay out, the more it dries. That being said, it is an extremely important thing that you keep these underneath the leather hard phase. You can easily pull your handles, wrap these up, and let your handles dry while these are not getting dry as fast by wrapping them up. It is probably the worst thing in the world to put all this work into your mugs pull your handles and find that your handles have cracked because one of the two clay bodies was a little bit too dry. So remember to wrap, wrap it up kids. Potter tip. 
this clay here is B-Mix. Every different type of clay usually has a different shrinkage rate. This means that it dries and when you put it into the bisque and the glaze, it's going to shrink a certain amount. Some clays have a total of 6% shrinkage rate, some have 10, some have 12. But before you start making your handles, I would ask you to please understand that if you are making a cup out of B-Mix and you are pulling a handle, have that handle also be made out of B-Mix. The issue that I see a lot of beginners have is that they'll get some random clay in the classroom and make B-Mix mugs while getting redstone or grog clay and then attaching the two together later on, wondering why they didn't stick together that well, number one, and two, wondering why they ended up cracking their handles. This is a very long way of saying, whatever clay you made your cup out of, you also need to be making the handle out of the same clay. To be fair, to be fair, I have seen people attach different clay bodies before and be fine, but making your cup and making your handle out of different clay bodies will increase the chance of the shrinkage rates being so different that it might create cracks. This is one of the golden rules of attaching handles. Please use the same clay body, and the second golden rule is make sure that they're the same amount of dryness. If you have a leather soft clay body, make sure that your handles you're going to attach are also leather soft. And same goes for leather medium. But please don't try and attach a bone dry clay body to a leather soft clay body. They will most likely not attach, or if they do attach and you get really lucky, they will most likely have cracks in them. I know some of you are saying no duh Dante right now, but like 80% of the questions in my DMs on Instagram are pretty much easily fixed by these two rules. With all of that out of the way, it took so so, so long. There's so many rules to making handles. We can finally get started. There are a bunch of ways to pull handles. I've seen people pull handles by balling up their clay, putting it on the side of their table, and pulling it from the side of their table like this. I've seen people with giant handles put their cups upside down, attach it straight to the mug, and start pulling just like this. But today we're gonna go over the way that I learned how to make handles in my class. Keep in mind there's a bunch of different ways to do it and if you know a couple different ways, it's always really cool to share that kind of education. That being said, today we're gonna do the technique that I was taught. First, get some clay. Pull that clay apart into little tiny balls, just like this, and start rolling them into little pillars, just like this. It's gonna look just like this. Now make as many of these as you have mugs. Today we have four mugs, so I'm going to be making four of these carrots. Potter tip. When you're making these carrots, try and make one end of the carrot a little tiny bit bigger than the other side, because you are going to be holding one of these constantly with your non-operative hand. My operative hand being my right hand, because I'm right-handed, I'm mostly going to be holding it like this through the entire process. This also means if you're left-handed, you'll most likely be holding this carrot stick right here with your right hand. Whichever hand's not your dominant hand is the one that you're going to be holding at the very top here. This is how ceramicists used to kill vampires back in the days. They would just like roll carrots and fire them with little stakes. There's a couple of things you're going to need right after you're done pulling your handles. Number one, you're probably going to be needing a sponge and a brush. These will come into play later and make this job a lot easier, trust me. You're also going to need a source of water. Your throwing bucket will do just fine, but I know a lot of potters that usually pull their handles over sinks, as one of your hands is going to be constantly wet in order to hydroplane and pull your handles. Number three, you have to click the like button. I, I don't, you know, I really don't know what this has to do with the artistic process, but, but I've been told it helps. Go ahead and grab one of those carrots with your non-dominant hand, usually the thicker part of the carrot. Wet your dominant hand right here and kind of make this little O, like this little circle just like this. Pretend you're trying to do that okay sign that all the kids get you to look at online, but you're gonna curl in the rest of your fingers as well, so it's gonna look just like this. Make that little O there and start all the way at the very top of the carrot. Now, start to pull down. Do not, and I mean this, do not pinch too hard. If you pinch too hard, you'll just end up pulling some off like this. The tip that really helped me is that someone once told me to do it with the same amount of pressure in which you would pet a cat or a dog. You don't really want to put too much pressure on it, that'll kind of crush it. You really just want to wet your hand and let it slide right over the end of the carrot while having a firm grasp on this end over here. If you feel any sort of drag as you're doing this, make sure that you keep wetting your hand. I usually wet my hand seven or eight times while this process is going. 
if you're doing it correctly, you will start to notice that the end of your carrot is going to get much, much longer. Remember that you're not looking for a completely flat end, and if you put your hand into a little circle and just keep doing this on one end or the whole clay body, you're essentially just gonna have a super flat part right here, just like this. You don't really want that, so remember as you're doing this, to turn your non-operative hand. This kind of makes sure that it stays in a nice circle instead of one big flat piece. If you feel any sort of drag, just go ahead, put your hand back in the water, and just keep on pulling like this. This right here looks just fine. One end of it is thicker because you were holding that part, and the other side is stretched out, just like you want it to be. You're pretty much halfway done with the whole process. But the thing that I was always taught to do that I don't see a lot of other potters doing is to hold it, kind of cradle it like a baby with one of your hands. Go ahead, take it, and try and get the blade of your non-operative hand to touch the other blade of your operative hand. If you do this correctly, not moving your dominant hand, you'll kind of end up just making a little handle. Touch the two ends together, and there you go. You've pretty much just made a handle. Now you just gotta cut this little part off right here and you pretty much have a handle to a mug. I also really like this technique because you can technically take the big part right here that you were holding onto as you were pulling your handle, touch that part and squish it right down onto almost any surface. And it usually sticks pretty well. It's not really gonna move and it can dry like this. You do also have to remember that clay does have a memory and you've just set that clay into its new memory. It's going to stay like this. As for most other techniques, you're pretty much just hanging them off of something until they dry. This lets the clay dry in the form that it's going to be in later. This is probably one of the more difficult things when it comes to making mugs. Because number one, you need a constantly wet pulling hand, which a lot of people don't seem to really understand for some reason. And number two, you need a very specific amount of pressure. You're not really putting any pressure on anything. You're kind of just lightly touching it while your hand's wet. And that's really the pressure that you're going to be needing while pulling your handles. The arch technique I just showed you is really just the way that I set my handles to make sure they stay in form. This hits two birds with one stone. I don't have to reform it later and it simply dries like that. It's a self-supporting curve. Let's do the rest of these handles just for example. You see, now you can kind of just leave your handles like that as you trim your cups or go do something else for the next five or 10 minutes to let them dry. Okay, well now we actually have to wait for these to dry because unlike the other things, I didn't do these last night. I, I, I did them right now. A few moments later. See, they're no longer tacky and they're not super wet. Now, these will basically hold form if I put them to the side. This is probably the easiest and most vital part of this entire process because the thing that I'm about to teach you right now works for almost any method of attaching clay to any other body. I mean, as long as it's made of clay, of course. This process is made much easier by having a sponge, something to cut your clay with, a simple pin tool will work, and some type of small brush as we will be trying to clean up those seam lines as we attach them to our mugs. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab one mug at a time and leave the rest of them in there so that they don't get too dry, which will make it harder to attach clay later on. Potter tip. Not everything you do on the table is going to be straight up. Sometimes you're gonna have to lay your mug down in order to work on it like this. But of course, you don't really wanna ruin your mug. So I highly suggest you get yourself a little towel and put it right here so that you can have a little bit of a pad. Before we even get started, there's one major cheat code that I wanna show you guys. This is a trick that my teacher showed me a long time ago. Now usually, when we start to attach handles, we just lay it down like this and we'll start to cut off the angle in which we want our handle to be at. But before you put this on, you really don't know what angle to cut this off at. Do I cut it way down here? Do I cut it over here? I, I really don't know. Well, I kind of have a potter's cheat code for that. Go ahead, hold your cup, and put this in the background of your cup. If you do it correctly, you can easily see how your handle would look if you decide to put it in a little bit more or a little bit less. For example, this is what it would look like if it was at the bottom of the cup. And this is what it would look like if it was the top. 
This is what it would look like if it had a very high arch, and so on and so forth. I call this the foreground technique. Even though it's technically like the handles in the background, it just foreground sounds cooler. I kind of like that look. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my pin tool, cut it right there where the body meets the actual handle, and right there. And this mark is going to stay there. I'm going to go ahead and put my clay down and cut it at that same angle. Just like this. Now when I decide to attach it, it'll pretty much look like what I thought it would look like when I put it in the background of the cup. This trick almost works for anything. I use it to attach ears onto vases, sculptures onto lids, anything that I'm going to attach, I essentially use this foreground trick. Now all we really have to do is score both sides, little, little scratchy scratch there, put your handle where it would be on the cup, hold it right there, and make two little marks because you're also going to have to score the cup as well. Now all we have to do is score this space right here and right here. Now that we have both sides scored, now all we have to do is get some slip. But Dante, I don't know how to get slip. Now, hold on, hold on, let me, let me show you. As most of you probably know by now, slip is the product that you get when you mix clay with a little bit too much water. And usually, you'll find some of this around your studio. I carry a giant bucket of slip with me almost in every studio I've ever worked in. But if you don't have any near you, it's very easy to get some of the clay that you've been working with, mix it in with a little bit of water after tearing it into little tiny pieces, and it'll very easily turn into this, which is slip. You remember that thing I told you about earlier? How about your handle and your clay body should most likely be the same exact clay? Well, that kind of goes for your slip as well. If you don't, your slip, technically like this clay, because it is partly clay, will shrink at a different rate than the actual clay body and the handle if it is not the same clay. So it is highly suggested that you use slip from the same clay body, unless you're like, really, really desperate. Go ahead and get a little bit of slip, which is pretty much just wet clay, put some right here, put some right here, and just mash it into your score marks right here. This is called scoring and slipping. You get it because the action of doing this is called scoring and this is this is slip it is called called scoring and slipping. What this does is it makes a really strong internal bond in between the slip, the little hash marks that you made inside the clay body, and the clay body itself. It creates a much stronger bond than simply taking wet clay and slamming it onto another clay and hoping that it sticks. This will make sure that the bond is internal on the inside of the handle and the mug itself. That's not too bad right there, but now we have all this slip and whatnot pushing out. And that's kind of good. This reassures me that there's enough slip to make that internal bond. But I don't want this showing in my final product. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that sponge and that brush I had mentioned earlier, along with a little bit of water, and clean these lines up. Go ahead, wet your sponge, and start on the inside of this clay body. Sometimes I like to just wet my finger and start on the inside of the handle just like this. As I do this, you'll definitely see these lines and these score marks disappear. This makes the cup look much cleaner. Your job is kind of to erase these score and slip marks, along with make it seem like this handle is part of the cup itself, instead of just something that you tacked on. Potter tip. If you want to do anything to this handle, I would suggest doing it now while it's in the leather soft to leather phase. At this moment, you can technically move it a little bit. So if you want a higher arch, you can go ahead and push it in and make a higher arch. If you want a less high arch or you want it to be a little more round, you can pull it out very easily like this. But whatever you're going to do, do it now because as you work on this, it is slowly drying. And of course, the reason we brought the brush along is because it's a little bit difficult to stick my fat potter fingers into this little crevice here. You see, I really don't reach down all the way down there. I like to get a really nice angled brush just to hit those marks. And there you go. Now you have a pretty nice mug. Now all you really have to do is clean it up a tiny bit more, wrap it up, and it's ready to go. You have made your first mug. Congratulations. But wait, there's more! I completely understand that some people might still have trouble with pulling their handles. Trust and believe, I didn't learn how to do this little technique here in one day, and I definitely needed to do this in one day. Either I needed to pass my class, or I had a commission due that I just needed a handle, but wasn't too comfortable in making handles yet. So I came up with another cheat code. It is in fact tremendously easy to have a cup and turn it into a mug without actually pulling a handle. You could very easily take any little lump of clay, form it into something that kind of looks or at least resembles a handle,
Again, score it on both sides. Take a little bit of slip here and just attach it directly onto the cup in the same way that you did the other handle. This is a big time major potter's cheat code because when I was learning how to make handles, I kind of had something to do in school, but I wasn't really ready to pull handles yet. I, I didn't become really proficient at this until I passed my beginner's class, but making a handled mug was necessary to pass that class. This, however, technically counts as a handle. This is not a handle in the traditional way, of course, but when this dries and it's put through the bisque, I can hold on to this, and technically, I can drink from this. It Technically, there is no reason to not call this a handle, but I can definitely tell you two reasons I really like this form of handle. Number one, it is technically sculpture, and my teacher did appreciate me thinking outside of the box. Number two, when I was in class, everybody had mugs just like this. It became really hard to differentiate my mug from other people's mugs because, well, we pretty much all just had cylinders with handles that looked just like this on them. But you know what? I knew mine because it had this very unique handle. While I do definitely think it is important to understand how to make actual traditional style handles, it is definitely a breath of fresh air to see a student go against the grain. And this is a way that you can number one, get away with not pulling a handle, and number two, step outside of the box a little bit. Big time cheat code. Now all we have to do is attach the rest of these handles to these cups, clean them up just a little bit, and let them slowly dry over time. You see, the process of actually putting on handles isn't really that difficult. I find that most people have difficulty pulling the handle itself and making the handle look like it's part of the cup as opposed to something that someone just kind of tacked on. There are two things that I really want you to remember while you are actually applying your handles. Number one, you probably should be cleaning them up like you just saw me do right after you attach them. And if you need to give them a little bit of time to dry, that's okay. Give them a little bit of time to dry, more from how you want them to be morphed. Then go ahead, get your brushes and sponges and just smooth them down. This makes them look really smooth and it makes it look like you actually put a little bit of work into your cup. And the second thing I want you to remember is that it does not have to be a traditional handle. You saw me make this, and this technically counts as a handle, and it works. I can very easily hold this like this. This right here, while yes, I might have made this in like two seconds, and it doesn't look like the most fantastic thing in the world, still qualifies as a mug, and it's out of the scope of the other mugs in the classroom. This is a little bit different. This is a little bit artistic. I actually would prefer these types of handles over these types of handles. If a student brought this to me and I knew that they could make this very easily, I'd probably give them extra Potter points just because they thought outside of the box. And if you do it correctly, you can always pinch the sides and it works really well as a handle. It's surprisingly comfortable. This is not a new cheat code. I've definitely done this before with some other pieces. As long as you can get a good grasp on whatever you sculpted to the side, it still technically works as a mug. I know this video was super long and I tried to make it a little bit longer than usual specifically because I know a lot of people don't have trouble making their forms. They don't have trouble pulling their cylinders or centering at this point. They really have trouble pulling their handles. So today we've gone over two things. Number one, we've gone over how I pull my handles. And number two, if you simply can't get that handle form down, we've given you a cheat code, an alternative, to really make sure that you still get handles on your cups. 
Well, thank you, Dirty Puddles, for joining me today. I know that this isn't an overnight skill, and you'll probably have to watch this video multiple times to kind of get that hand formation down. I will be letting a couple videos out that will also echo this video. This is kind of just an overall video of how I make my mugs because the technique is fairly simple, but physically doing it takes a little bit of time to learn. And because of that, I'm probably going to make a video of me just making mugs so that you guys can kind of get that form down. And secondly, we're gonna make another video of me just showing you a bunch of different handle types that I've learned across the years. Because this traditional handle is the base, but there's a lot more things you can do with these handles than just make this regular old type of handle. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful potter eyes to see. We have a fantastic Facebook and Discord community full of a bunch of artists who are always willing to help you with your artwork. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, good luck on making your handles, and I will see you dirty potters next week. Oh my god, it's like I prepared and actually thought about what I was going to do in this video the night before. Oh, it's, it's, it's almost like I'm an organized person or something. Oh, your voice sounds condescending and I don't like it. Well, you're dumb. <laughs>